Behold, he comes riding on a cloud out of Zion Gate. Salvation come. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Beats of Ministries, friends, families, and associates. Welcome to another awesome, magnificent, and glorious day that our God has made. Welcome into the presence of the everlasting God, the creator of all things visible and invisible. We come into his presence with joy and we bless him who sits upon the throne of glory. We come through that porthole, the Son of God, Christ. For no man come to God except through Christ. Therefore, we rejoice in the presence of Christ, for he is ever with us. He has promised never to leave us or forsake us. We bless his holy name. We bless his holy name. Ladies and gentlemen, I was having a conversation with a fellow believer. And in our dialogue, as we spoke to each other, he brought up a subject and elaborated on it about pastors from all over the world now teaching a new doctrine. A doctrine that earth is now heaven. A doctrine which excludes the return of Christ. These pastors have now come to terms in their mind that Jesus is not coming again. They tell the congregation get what they're getting now in this life. Yet they stand in the office of pastorhood and prophethood saying they are the representation of Christ. But I tell you of a truth, they are wolf in sheep clothing because any believer, any believer who says that Christ is not returning has made Christ a liar. Any pastor, prophet, or teacher say that there have been some misunderstanding and that Christ is not coming and some say it's a myth because over 2,000 years Christ has been preached that he's coming and he has not yet appeared. These so-called ministers have removed the cloak that covered their deception from the moment they utter the word Christ is not returning they may be eloquent speakers they may be able to captivate an audience with their words They may be excellent presenters of a thought in the scriptures. But I tell you of a truth. If they don't believe Christ 
is coming back they are operating in their own intellectual ability and the spirit of the living God is not with them they are using man wisdom and not the wisdom of God or of Christ if we are in Christ we are supposed to have the mind of Christ and if Christ is in you then you know that you know he is coming back the time that Christ left the earth 2000 years ago in heaven that's only two days Christ told us to set our eyes upwards heavenly he told us of the signs that will permeate the earth in the time of his coming false teachers false Christ I heard about a lady in China saying that she are the manifestation of Christ that Christ has come back as a Chinese woman but I would remind all believers before Christ came 2000 years ago there were many people started to rise up to say they are Christ When people set false date and false teaching, it, it set forth into the world, it set forth into the world to break down the wall of faith and cast it to the ground. It sent forth to destroy the believer faith in Christ but a true true servant of God will speak the words of God and I'm telling you today you as a believer can judge the words that I'm saying we are in the day of the Lord and the day of the Lord is the time when Jesus comes through clouds the day of the Lord it's a time of race, war. Every man has to run to his own land. The day of the Lord is a time of third world war. Jesus is coming. I may not have the, the aptitude to teach on the intellectual capacity of some of those pastors that pure words of deception to tell you that Jesus is not coming but what I have is the spirit of truth and I tell you without fear or favor that Christ is coming with power and great glory is coming you can choose to follow those pastors because you hate you hold them up in high esteem and the words of Christ you diminish because you believe dear words above your Lord's if he is your Lord you can judge yourself are you expecting Christ because
because if you truly believe that Christ is coming, then like the five wise virgin, you prepare yourself for the bridegroom wedding. You will live your life in anticipating of his appearance. You will be putting away the sin that so easily is said to you. But if you are living your life without guard or fear of God or the fear of Christ returning, then your lifestyle is denying the return of Christ is coming. Your lifestyle is telling the world you don't believe that Christ is coming. Because if you did and you are a believer in the word of God, then you will order your steps in his ways in preparation of his coming. But because, because your lifestyle is contrary to the preparedness of those who are expecting Christ, you deny him. That's why those who live that way believe the pastors who deny him because now they're in line because how can two walk together unless they agree the reason they follow those pastors because they agree but I don't agree I know that I know that I know Christ is coming. I know, I know that I know race war is coming. I know that I know that I know third world war is upon us. If you think coronavirus is anything, wait and see. If you think tornadoes and storm at category 5 is anything, wait and see the judgment of the Almighty. This word is not sent to scare but to prepare. It's to prepare. You know, we have false casters today and they can use the calculation and the air pressure of the atmosphere and they can estimate the size of storm as it approaches the land from five, six, seven, eight, two weeks out. They can track the storm as it's coming ashore. And they can tell you, this is a category 5, move on the way. Go from this place. Go and find shelter inland. Go and protect yourself from the rat that's coming. Because this storm is going to cause great destruction. Now, when these forecasters and the mayors and all the weather people and your prime minister or your governors say these things they are not saying it to scare you but to prepare you because if you take heed and move out the way out of the storm you will not suffer loss of life Everything around you might be destroyed, 
the house, the car, but you will not suffer loss of life. Even so, I'm here standing in the gap and I'm saying, prepare yourself. It's at the doors. It's at the doors and I want you to save your soul. It doesn't matter what else get destroyed. But save your soul. Repent and do that is right in the sight of God. Remember the Ninevites. God was about to bring destruction and he sent Jonah to warn them and they repented and God had mercy. In this great and mighty day of the Lord, only those with clean hands and pure hearts must not lift up their eyes unto idols will stand and see the king coming in his glory because everybody else will be hiding and saying the great day of his judgment has come they may call it out to the rocks to fall on us but you will be shouting this is my God I have waited for him this is my God Now, now is the time to make that decision. You can't follow pastors and leaders that are going against the scriptures because their teaching is in line with reality. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Our faith said Christ is coming again. No matter what before our eyes, we believe him. The angel said the same way it's him go up, the same way it's coming back down. We believe. Therefore, we will not faint. Never be moved. Let them cast down the word of Christ as much as they want. Let them deceive those who is given into their hands. But let the sons and daughters of God stand on the word of God and show yourself. Let your light shine. Show yourself. No matter what is happening. No matter who is dying, no matter who is suffering, stand like Paul in the prison, stand like Peter in the prison, stand like Stephen when he was torn to death, stand! Because Christ says, if you are faithful unto death, you will receive a crown of life. Stand! Do not believe those pastors because their faith is dried up because of sin in their life. But yours is a spring of living water because you have faith in God. And if you have faith in God, righteousness is imputed unto you and the blood of Jesus wash you clean. Stand. Stand and do not be moved. No matter what these pastors are spurring from their mouth. Stand. Hold on to the sure word of God. You have come this far by faith. In Galatians, Paul says, You started by faith. Now you're going to trust in the law. Well, I say, 
you started by faith. Now you're going to trust in man. You're going to trust in a pastor that lied and cast on Christ's word who never lied. You're going to put aside the word of Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the risen King, the first begotten from the dead, the faithful witness to believe a man? Is this wisdom? Is this understanding? Or is this how far you have fallen? Get up. Rise up. Brush yourself off. And come to the throne of grace and repent because when when Christ was washing the, the feet of the apostles and Peter said thou shalt not wash my feet Christ says if I did not wash your feet you have no part with me then Peter said not my feet only but my heads and my hand he said Christ said he that is washed is clean every whit. You have been washed with the baptism water. You are clean every whit. And if you are sin, you just go before the throne of grace, fall down on your knees, repent, and rise up like you walk, rise up out of the water that day. Because he that is washed is washed every whit. So stand. You will appear spotless and without shame if you stand. Do not deny Jesus by denying his word, saying that he's not coming. He is coming. He said, shall I find faith? Let him find it in you and let him find it in me. Let him find it in believers who believe through the persecution, believe through the lies, believe through the trials, believe through the storm, believe through the fire, believe. Let him find us believing. Let him find us faithful. Let him find us just. Let him find us true. But don't let him find us following false teachers who say Christ is not coming. Depart from them and touch not the unclean things, saith the Lord, and I'll be your God and you will be my people. Depart, come from amongst them, saith the Lord. Time is short, very, very short. What is your decision? Who will you believe? What side will you stand on? Moses says, Let all that on the Lord's side come and stand with me. The Levites came and stood. Will you be like a Levite? Will you come and stand and believe Christ's word? And do not believe the false teachers. Will you come and stand? Or will you be like the children of Israel who stood with the congregation and were slain? 3,000 of them. Where will you stand? On the Lord's side? Or with the crowd? Who would you believe? Christ? Or man? I continue. Where is your faith rest in these last days? With all the social media and all the unclean things that are spreading across every platform. And all the leaders falling lower and lower and abasing themselves. Will you stand up to be righteous? Will you stand up to be holy? Will you stand up to be set apart, a peculiar people, 
that follow the things of God and cast off ungodliness, will you be the difference in these last days? Will you? God is watching. Let him be the judge of your action. Let him see your heart. I'm only here to tell you the truth. Christ.